I can't imagine it happening again. Uh, no, I, no, no, I, I won't do it again. I, I, I said uh, at the beginning of last year, 1995, I said to myself from now on, no longer will I be uh, negotiated into trying to make a pop album. I will no longer be involved in trying to make uh, money just from quick information, musically speaking. I will no longer, I would rather, no, I do what I do now. I am busy learning to uh, orchestration. I'm learning a lot, a lot of things that are very important to my future. And that's got nothing to do with pop records. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong in pop records. I love some of the great songs. I, I'm, I would be stupid to say, oh, well, I don't like Elton John. I don't like Lionel Richie. I don't like Sting. I love them. Mm -hmm. I love all their music. Mm -hmm. But I'm not that kind of person. Yeah. It's simple. I'm very interested in other kinds of music. And I think record companies have said, okay, John Anderson, forget him, you know. Mm -hmm. so. I'm happy. Mm. You, you talked about living in, in San Luis Obispo right mm. now, right? Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> it's ma magical here. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. And, and your, your work with the local musicians, now, did, you, you, did you seek them out or they seek you out? Or how exactly did the No, it's funny. I would go to the local bar and listen to the Irish musicians. Mm -hmm. And I've recorded them now and uh, go to the local symphony and listen to them and ask them, could I write some music for them? It took a little time because they didn't know who I was so much. And then they said, yeah, okay. And so I'm writing for the local dance company mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But it's more like a, it's something like a village atmosphere. It's, uh -huh. not, a, it's not a big city. Mm -hmm. But there's so much good talent here. Really? Yeah. It's kind of a surprise. Yeah. Well, what, what brought you to San Luis Obispo? Well, my wife's uh, sister lives here. Uh -huh. We used to come up a lot, and I just enjoy the town. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it's very sweet to be here. Uh -huh. But you're you're interacting pretty organically with with your local with your local community. Very much because the, they've they've got this beautiful uh, performing arts center opening up uh, next month. Uh -huh. It's like an, an opera house, so I'm writing an opera for next year. Uh -huh. And I'm very excited about that. Mm. Do you think you would have been the, 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 just as active anywhere else, or did anywhere? Yeah. Yeah, you're. you're well, yeah, wherever I've been, I've always been very interested in local musicians and local music. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's interesting. I, I guess that that does sort of give you the latitude then to concentrate 100 percent on yes stuff when you do get around. When to it comes, yeah. yeah, because I'm all I'm, I'm also doing four or five different other things. So yes, music is like fresh. Uh, Fresh air. Mm -hmm. And you, you talked about getting together with, with Chris Squire at one point. Sort of say, you know, that was a great, great time in my life to sit down with Chris for a month on and off, and we wrote about a dozen songs, mm -hmm. and we're in touch with each other every other day now. Mm -hmm. And we just, uh, I don't know, we, you know, maybe he went on a journey and I went on a journey for 15 years, mm -hmm. and then we, we met each other at the end. Huh, so, so I guess just as Robert Fripp controls the destiny of, of King Crimson, you and Chris are pretty much at the heart of, of Yes's destiny. Yeah, we know what we want. We, we do know what we want to happen. Is, is there any sort of struggle as, as to who pulls the strings in Yes? I mean, there have been so many people throughout the years that it, 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 the, the, the power could lie in many hands. It's, just it's so different. It's like there's so many different ways of creating the music that uh, you'll hear, you know, the next album and the new music we're going to be re writing and recording in the next two months is very different than most Yes music that I've been involved in. So I'm very happy about that. And what, what accounts for that change there? I think because you, in, in some ways I could... I'm writing with Alan White, which uh, I hadn't written with Alan for a long time. So uh, I know I rang up Rick Wakeman today because I found a song me and Rick wrote 10 years ago, and I just found it. It's called Axis of Love, and it's a great song. So I said to Rick, come on, we should record this for the new album, you know. So I'm waiting for him to call me back. Mm 
because I had to leave it on his uh, on his uh, answering machine. <laughs> you really had just just found this song, or had it, had it been in the back of your mind, and you had always been looking no, it, for it? No, it popped up this morning. I was uh, going through some tapes, and I said, "Gosh, I remember this song." Mm-hmm. And I rang up Rick Wakeman. He wasn't home. He's probably playing golf or something. <laughs> but is, is that an unusual occurrence? Or do you have all these sort of little gems laying around that you could? There's always there's always a lot of music around. Uh, it's e- I, I always say it's pretty easy to make music. It's the rest of the business that's tough. Meaning that, uh, like putting it onto a record or getting, getting a, a deal, approval, getting uh, a record company interested, getting a promoter wanting to take you on tour. Mm-hmm. It's always tough, you know. Mm-hmm. So you, ha- you, ha- you have to, uh, I, I, I guess you have to make compromises then if you want to cut those deals. Well, not anymore. No, mm-hmm. I've decided, uh, as I said, two, two years ago, 95, I said, that's it, that's it, no more, no more, no more. I'll just get on with life, and and if they don't agree, then I'll keep moving on in another direction. Mm-hmm. So we have about, what, two, I've got a list of about like eight guys who have been out, in and out of the band for all these years, and yeah. everybody trusts you and Chris implicitly. It's like they, they, they have left the fate of the band in your hands and will basically... Uh, uh, come along whenever you say, uh, guys, you, you mind? Yeah. I think Chris is a very, very earthy person, mm-hmm. and I'm flying in the sky. Mm-hmm. So we, we complement each other, mm-hmm. and Alan always feels comfortable, and Steve and Rick and everybody else that's worked with the band are very comfortable when me and Chris are really locked in to an idea. Mm-hmm. And that's the way it should be. Mm-hmm. The, the, the guy has made a list of all the, 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 the different yes personnel here, and he was just wanted, he wanted like a little comment from you on each of these guys, uh, starting with Steve Howe. Steve Howe is a brilliant guitar player. He's a brilliant guitar collector. He has the most incredible collection of guitars. It's like he's a guitar, you know, <laughs> himself. He, he's just a magnificent uh, being who just seems to play guitar all the time. I don't think he, he doesn't do much else. He, he doesn't. He eats a bit, but that's about it. <laughs> I see it. Alan White? Alan White is your perfect uh, harmony person. He gets on with everybody. He's an, he is a very, very powerful drummer. He, he, he's like a juggernaut train. And he's, he's so in time with the pulse of uh, our music. And he played on Imagine. So what mm-hmm. else did you say? <laughs> Rick Wakeman. Rick Wakeman's crazy. <laughs> but he's also still got all the talent that he ever had. A uh, remarkable musician. Uh, he tells terrible jokes. <laughs> Some, sometimes they're okay, but... <laughs> <laughs> Trevor Rabin? Trevor's an amazing musician. I, I always say he has an amazing capacity for music. And uh, he's very interested in the more commercial side of music rather than the, the, the depth of music. But he, but he has an amazing uh, knowledge of music and a great producer, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony Kay? Tony's a great guy, great musician, pretty wild on stage, mm-hmm. and pretty wild off stage. Uh, Bill Bruford? He's a very strange person. Very okay, what? Strange. Strange? And we won't yeah. Write. Well, he seems to be a very depressive, <laughs> he seems to be a very depressing person. Mm-hmm. Every time I see anything written by Bill, it's very depressing. <laughs> he doesn't seem to enjoy anything he's ever done. Of a hundred percent of his work in the last twenty-five years, I think he likes about five percent of it. <laughs> but I, I, I still quite, for my part, I think he is an extraordinary visionary as a percussionist. Hmm. Mm. Do, do you think he's very English? Very. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then we, in parentheses here, we have uh, Tony Banks. Peter Banks. Oh, Peter Banks. I'm sorry. Yeah, Peter's a sweet guy. He was a great guitar player with the band in the first two years of the band's life. Mm-hmm. And uh, he doesn't really have very 
happy memories of being with Yes, which is very sad. But it's very hard to be in his shoes because he's watched Yes become